There was a time long ago where humanity once lived in peace with the gods. But such a time is no more. May the prayers of illumination, wisdom, springtime, and destiny unveil the truth of the skies and the earth as those that once heralded the tales of the past are long gone. Welcome to the Artifact Chronicles, where we discuss obscure Genshin Impact artifact lore for the sake of my sanity. We just recently finished the Corruption Trilogy, and I think it's high time that we begin a much lighter series of videos covering Genshin's world building. Most of Teyvat's lore is hidden away in the recesses of the archive, and it's a shame that such wonderful pieces of writing are often ignored. So, this series is dedicated to those very artifacts and the tidbits of story hidden in each of them. Today, we will be discussing four prayers. Illumination, Wisdom, Springtime, and Destiny. As well as the envoys of heaven and the ruination of Celestia's bonds with humanity. If you are interested in this kind of content, please feel free to subscribe and join us in Discord and Twitch. I often post Genshin Impact lore and discussions much like this one. But today, we will be discussing the tale of the Earth's truth. The cycle of life and death that Teyvat must face. The four tiaras of Torrent, Frost, Thunder, and Flame all bear the same history. These are tiaras worn by those tasked with offering sacrifices in ancient times. The story of the four tiaras have one motif. All prosperity must end someday. But that does not mean nothing is eternal. Rather, eternity itself is cyclical, a constant wheel shifting and turning for days to come. The truth of this world is such. Everything will be born anew. Everything mighty and every ancient city and every austere place of sacrifice will one day return to profundity in the earth. But the earth itself will always be born anew. Let's return to a time in Tevat where the people of the land could hear revelations from the heavens directly. The Tiara of Frost states that there was once a time when the envoys of the gods walked among benighted humanity. The entirety of the world was once blanketed in eternal ice and snow, and the weathered years of icy cold had made life on Earth weak and sparse. However, the ice began to thaw, and the first fires were born anew. Humanity had found prosperity, and the envoys of the heavens had promised them great success. Such a future was imperative, according to the envoys. Immutable. Inevitable. But the humans, despite such a prediction by the gods, would ask only one thing. Would a day come when such wonderful times might turn to an end? The envoys had no answer. But human curiosity is unsatiable. Amongst them, they would appoint a chief priest, and his signature attire would be the sole crown of white branches on his head. They would send the priest to the deep places of the world, to antediluvian ruins and long-buried altars, to find the answer to a question the envoys would not give. Time continued on prosperously, and humanity faced a bountiful harvest. The earth was blessed and ruled by heaven, and even the flow of the elements was smooth and well-ordained. A hundred years of bounty, as promised by the envoys, had come to humanity. Yet, there was still one lingering question. What would happen in the future? In a thousand years? Even in the next hundred? Would they fight famine? Would their altars and palaces fall? Would the remnant of their history be the lone silver-white tree standing amidst them? The envoys would only respond with silence. So the chief priest, head crowned with white branches, would delve deeper to understand. Humanity kept prospering, 
and prospered as the water had run dry and the thunder first pierced the sky. People enjoyed untold wisdom, but their prosperity brought pride and ambition. And with such came the mind to question, the will to defy, and the heart to disobey the very deities that had blessed them. So they questioned the heaven's authority and schemed to enter the garden of the gods. The envoys were not pleased. And though there was a time they had promised people divine love, prosperity, and wisdom, to challenge the divine was forbidden. So a sacrifice was made. The chief priest who wore the white branch crown went forth to appease the divine envoys. The priest only delved deeper into the ancient capital where he sought the hidden wisdom of the silver tree. They say that tradition had brought the same sight to the next line of chief priests. As they take their final breath, they come to understand. Underneath a withered tree sat a mountain of crowns. Each crown was worn by those tasked with offering sacrifices in ancient times. As the crown withered in years of icy cold, subjected to the dancing sacrificial flames, submerged in water, and hearkened the call of the thunder, it bore the secrets of the chief priests hidden in every lifetime. All prosperity must end, and the earth shall be born anew. Eternity is cyclical, a constant wheel shifting and turning for days to come. That was unexpectedly heavy. I really just wanted to make a chill video on artifacts, but wow, okay. The tale of the prayers is actually quite symbolic. Just like how this story was a loop, the four artifacts were also cyclical. The tale begins with a tiara of frost, then flame, torrent, and then thunder, until we're turning back to the frost. It actually took me a bit of time discerning the order because I got stumped. So let's dissect the potential plot lines and narratives of the prayer artifacts. First. We know that the branches and trees spoken of in this story connect to the ley lines. That much is simple. The artifacts are from world bosses that require ley lines to unlock. But the second implication of this story is much more interesting. There was a time when the envoys of heaven once had close relations to humanity. It's a fascinating concept because we always shown a negative light on Celestia before. Especially with the destruction of Conria and the Traveler's first encounter with the Sustainer of Heavenly Principles. But here, we see that they played a much more neutral role, observing as humanity eventually grew impatient of them and even dared question the gods. This shows us several possibilities to how Celestia actually operates with humans. First is that there is a systematic approach that is true neutral. They will help humanity prosper as intended by time and even help humanity grow. But because of humanity's own impatience and ambition, the envoys became angry. I believe that Celestia is not necessarily an evil entity, and that there is no real evil in the story of Genshin Impact. It's all just muddled gray. Celestia had loved humanity and promised them so much, yet they understood the reality of humanity's fate, that they are fated to die and be born anew. Celestia, in my opinion, is more of a true neutral, and we can see that with how they regard principles to a T. Each Archon reflects a lack of flexibility based on the ideal they represent. Barbados' freedom can be a form of passivity in how he puts his disposition. Morax is unmoving in his concept of contracts despite its morality, and Baal's concept of eternity has suffocated the people of Inazuma into a stagnant rule. This could even be reflected in how the enemy of the Traveler received her title, the Sustainer of Heavenly Principles. In all honesty, the Traveler is an enigma, an exception to the rules of Thevat and therefore must be exterminated to achieve balance. Her role in Celestia therefore holds true. She must stop an alien from disturbing the delicate fate of Thevat. 
However, there is another implication to this tale. If Celestia is truly a neutral entity, then that means that there must be something so devastating that happened to Conria that shifted the peace. Gold's corruption is the first important event that comes to mind when considering the reason Celestia would want to destroy Conria. If Gold had created monsters from the Abyss through his corruption, then it would make sense why the gods would retaliate and destroy the civilization responsible for such heinous acts. Is it right to say for Celestia to condemn the whole nation for the mistakes of a few? Who knows? The whole story has yet to be found, but maybe, just like the story in the prayers, the people of Conria themselves grew too ambitious and proud of themselves that they dared test God. After all, Dainsleaf does say that Conria was the pride of humanity. If the prayers are accurate, and the reality of Teyvat is that it will all die one day, only to be birthed anew by the decree of celestial entities, then it would further shine light in the second video of our Corruption Trilogy. Lumine's war with destiny is to end the cycle of destruction for Teyvat, by angering the very gods that have become passive to its demise. She had come from a world that was also fated to ruination, so if the reality of Teyvat is the cycle of destruction, then she wouldn't dare stand for such atrocity. This was really just a short video about the fascinating tale of the prayer's artifacts. And personally, just something I really wanted to make after reading up on it. I'm so glad that the people in the gardens were talking about artifacts. This artifact set is the least utilized set in the whole game, but definitely has one of the juiciest lores I've ever seen. So I hope I can give more appreciation to it by making this video. But nevertheless, thank you so much for watching. I will be uploading a couple of new videos about some characters and the new 2.1 event. I'll be uploading a future video calculating all the primo gems you can get for 2.1, so if you want to check that out, please feel free to subscribe. This video was honestly just me rambling on about artifacts, so if you want to continue on with the series, please suggest what next artifact you want me to cover. I already have covered the beginnings of the Peel Flame set, the Crimson Witch set as well, so if you want to have any suggestions, please just leave it down in the comments and I will do my best to accommodate. The next video would probably be a month that video, so check that out. But nevertheless, this is Aster and thanks for chilling with me.